recording. All right, guys, Zillow Flex meeting, training. Today is Thursday, December 2nd, and let's dive in. So a couple things on the agenda. We're going to listen to a callback. I'm going to go over the notes from our growth advisor. And then I also want to show you guys a resource on Zillow's website, their uh, training academy, where there's a lot of good stuff on there. So we'll, we'll check something out on there as well. So let's dive in real quick. Let me share my screen. Anybody have a call in particular that they want to play back? If not, I'll just pick a random one. Okay, anybody have a call recently? I had one yesterday. I pick on you. I do. I just forgot who it was. It was pretty good. Okay, let's hear Bethos because he volunteered. All right, now the internet would only work. What else happened? One second, one second. Although at night it's pretty cold. Some nights, yeah. Um, okay, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> Let's try again. Uh, okay, Bethel, which one was yours? Sahiti. Oh, that was yesterday. All right, we're going to play Bethel's back. Everyone, let's listen to this. Hi there, Alex. I'm connecting to you. Hi, Sahiti. This is Nestor. You're still from your agent. How are you? Uh, I'm David. Uh, I'm... You said you'll be calling me in the podcast? Um, I, I should have said that. That must have been the, uh, the automated system. Uh, okay. But I will... I will I see that you're interested in the property on four four thousand four Caribbean Common in three months. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, this is my first time buying a place, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking to uh, buy something in and around in and around Seamount. So I just want to know the details, like how things uh, things will be in case if I want to buy house in like six months or one year. So your time frame is about six months to one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, that's that's great thank you because I actually specialize in first-time home buyers just like yourself. Um, so I can definitely you know give you a rundown of the basics and Good go through, talent. you know the whole home process, uh, as well as you know offering financial um, guidance with like lenders and stuff like that to see how much you can qualify for. Okay. Are you already pre-qualified or no? No, I'm not pre-qualified. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Okay. And then as far as far as uh, viewing this property, what time frame works best for you to view the home? Uh, can you come again? Yeah, when would you like to see the property? What time works best for you? Uh, maybe Next week? Uh, okay. Okay, so next week in the evening yeah. and weekday. Okay, so how about this coming Monday at 5 p.m.? Does that work? Yeah, sure. It works. Okay, at 5 p.m. Okay, I'll go ahead and check in with the seller to see if that time is available. If for some reason that time frame is not available, you know, day and time that you that would work for you. Sometimes I can 
Let's go. Good job, Beto. Feedback, feedback. Who wants to give some feedback from here in the office? So let's talk about then what uh, let's talk about what we're looking for, right? What we're to grade the call. We're looking for ALM, right? Booking the appointment. We're looking for location, right? We're looking for motivation. And then we're looking to build rapport all around that and ask like complimentary questions. 
So did he book the appointment? Book the appointment. Location, did he touch on the location at all? Fremont, okay. Uh, motivation, let me yeah. go over that. Next six months or so, she's getting married. Um, how about rapport building? Scale of one to 10, how did he do on rapport? A six. Yeah. Those of you at home listening, um, throw your hands up. Scale of one to 10, how did he do on rapport building? So we're all frozen. <laughs> Seven. Everyone's frozen. I was the first one to say it's like a four. Okay. So that has not ask like any any personal questions. Yeah. So I think on the, as far as the ALM, he did a decent job at the ALM. He got the appointment, obviously. Um, he sounded, you know, he sounded, you know, good on the phone. Um, were you nervous? Uh, I was. A little bit. I could tell you were a little bit nervous. Um, because he was, he wasn't like loose, completely loose. He was a little like too textbook, too scripted. Um, and that's going to come with time, right? So all I could say is the more calls you do, the more calls you make, the more comfortable. The other thing too, is when you answer these calls, right? Your phone's ringing, you're trying to hurry up and, and answer it. So you're kind of on the spot. So the only way to get over that is just to take more calls and then, it, then it's not a big deal, right? Or just take a, like, just take a deep breath right before you start talking. Um, so book the appointment, location. I would have maybe asked a couple follow-up questions, right? Is Fremont the only area you're looking in? Um, you know, where do you work or is this close to your job? I would build around that, right? Cause she, she's, this is the only property. This is the property that got her in the door, but now you got to ask like, what is it about this property? Is this the location? Are there any other locations you're open to? Um, is this, is this a good, you know, commute from your work? She asked about BART, right? So BART could have been a segue into asking her where she works or what does she do? Right. So I think you did everything like surface level textbook right like you hit all the points but you didn't go above and beyond in my opinion to build rapport and ask the follow-up questions right so like that's going to be the next step for you and it's probably the next step for a lot of the people on the, on the on the calls right is we're hitting the alm and then we're that's all we're doing you know we're throwing in a little bit here and there but ask the questions right she said she was getting married Did anybody pick that up yeah that, that was like a there was like little chunk in there where she was like explaining some like personal stuff but when i was on the call it like cut out and it was really choppy and then yeah. she just started going into what she was looking for in the house yeah. and i was like uh, i don't want to like ask her to repeat everything she just said so i just kind of went along with uh, with how the conversation was going yeah so i mean we got to make sure that we understand that the only way they're judging you is by the phone call right so if you don't like let your personality shine or if you don't ask questions to get them to talk and open up or maybe share a laugh or maybe, you know, figure something, uh, something that you have in common, then it's going to be really easy to just have them cancel on you and ghost you because they don't know you, right? If there's no like attachment or nothing there, then it's easy to, to just cancel this. But if you like dug in a little bit you shared some laughs you asked a question or maybe you say oh yeah i've been there before or yeah i i know that area or you know or yeah i take the bart to work or whatever it might be right that you guys have in common um you'll be able to really solidify you know or at least start to build a relationship so that you could get to meet them and then when you meet them obviously that's when you build more of a relationship so i would have just went deeper right I think that's the that's going to be the next level. And I know you you just got on the flex, so your calls should only improve from here. But I would say, you know, good job for just starting, right? You just barely started getting these calls not too long ago, right? Um, but now we got to go next step. Um, any feedback, guys? Anything else you guys want to add? Anybody at home want to unmute yourself? I had a quick question. Was frozen um yes regarding the the length of it because i remember um back in the previous trainings we were mentioning that the call should last five minutes if we're trying to build rapport does that sh should we still keep in mind of the timing 
No, so I think we talked about that last time is we're no longer doing that, right? We're no longer keeping it short, right? Okay. Initially, that was like kind of just to, you know, get going. But now we're finding that if you make the calls longer and you build more rapport, the conversion is going up. People are actually meeting with you. They're showing up more. So I would keep the call as long as it needs to go, right? You don't want to drag it on, obviously, but don't be like timing yourself, right? I would say a five minute, six minute, seven minute call, you can build a lot of rapport if you're asking the right questions. Um, maybe something like asking like, you know, how their day is going or something. Hey, how's your day going? Or, hey, have you looked into any homes or congrats on, you know, taking the first step of buying a home. Like, remember, it's all, it's about service as well, right? But you don't want to feel like, you don't want to position yourself like I work here, like you're coming to a store where it's just really transactional because that's how the consumer sees it. Like, oh, Zillow, click this button and Zillow is going to answer the phone, right? But really we're Zillow's partner and we're an actual agent and we're self-employed. So we're actually, a, we're a business, right? This, we're our own business. So get out of the habit of just like being like a, like you're going to target, right? And like, you're just keeping it real surface. Like the person at target doesn't ask you like, like uh, you know, how far do you live from here, right? They might say, oh, hey, how you doing today? All right, great. You want a bag with that? And then you're out, right? And you will never remember like that target person ever. But when you go somewhere else, like you go to your, barber or your hairdresser and you're sitting there and you're talking about things and life and all these things like you really build a relationship with them right you start to get to know these people so we got to reframe our minds from like we're not just phone answers we're not just door openers we're actually trying to build a relationship with this lady on the phone trying to figure out what their true motivation is right you know what's what's coming up for them in their life that's making them want to buy a home now. she said married right so that would have been the perfect opportunity to go on, oh, congratulations, you're getting married. Awesome, when are you guys getting married, right? Do you have everything planned out yet? Something like that. Connecting. connecting, right? Now you're connecting and now you're no longer just the Zillow guy opening the door and answering the call. You're now like building a friendship, right? And that's the whole thing is we're trying to build relationships. So you just gotta reframe your mind and it's, go ahead. One thing that I do that? for a lot of people is I'll say that like, whatever your name, like, oh, your name's Enrique. That's my best friend's name. Or like, oh, that's my mom's name, you know, or something like that. Or like when I go down towards the uh, motivation, if they tell me that's their first home, like make it a big deal. Like, hey man, congratulations, dude. Like that's such a big step, blah, blah, blah. You know, so you can kind of build that relationship there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like the point and I like what you're trying to do, but I would not lie because if it's not genuine, right? If you really, if your best friend really is Enrique and that's me, you're, I'm your best friend. Or you could say like, you could say like, oh, I know someone named Enrique. I am all your best friend. Yeah. yeah. Right. They didn't say it, but I don't like, don't bullshit, right? <laughs> There's a difference between bullshitting and like building rapport. I guess don't bullshit if you're not good at it. Oh, so why yeah, oh, Swahiti, that's my mom's name. <laughs> that's my dog's name. That's my dog's name. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that, right? But to the point he's making of you, like, adding in, right? Like, okay, let's say you're, let's say the guy's name was Tom and your best friend really is Tom, right? You should bring up the fact that, his, that your best friend's Tom, right? From MySpace, Tom from MySpace. You guys don't know about that. <laughs> yeah if there's a connection there and there's something in common then then that's your opportunity to bring it up right so to the point of emmanuel saying right is yeah find those little things that they say where you have that connection and you go on that right um a good a good technique guys to build connection is using the ford it's an acronym ford technique right so ford stands for um family occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? Everyone has family, everyone has some sort of occupation, everyone does things recreational, and everyone has dreams, right? Those are things that you can ask and talk about and find, you know, 
similarities, right? So if you don't know what to say, ask about their family. That's F, right? The Ford, F-O-R-D. Ask about their occupation. Ask what they do for fun, recreation. And if you want to get real deep, ask about their dreams, right? Like dreams, you know, could be like their goals, right? Their goals, not what they actually dream about. Um, <laughs> then you're being a creep. Uh, but ask about their goals, right? You know, stuff like that. So there's a technique to connecting with people, right? It's asking questions and then letting them talk. The more you let them talk, you're, you just got to ask the question that gets them to talk. And then you ask another question that gets them to talk more about what they're talking about, right? And then you can just, you can keep going forever, right? Um, you know, and then before you know, it, it's like you guys are just chit-chatting. You're talking about all this other stuff besides real estate. And you're, oh, okay, yeah, let's get back to setting that appointment, man. It's great meeting you, you know? And then they're like, oh, yeah, this guy's cool. I want to meet them. I'm not going to ghost them, right? They, we just booked an appointment. I just connected. Like, he just told me he has two kids, and I have two kids. And, you know? But do you get what I'm trying to say? So, and I think this is, this is the key for a lot of people. This is what's going to take you from average to great right? It's your ability to connect with people. It's not what you say, it's how you say it and how you find those, that common ground with people that gets people to put their guard down and just relate to you as a human to human. That's what we want to do with every single client, with every single phone call forever, period. Right. If you take that advice and you apply that approach all across the board to everything you do in this business, you will be busy forever. The moment you start just treating it like a transaction and the person sees that you don't really care, or you're just trying to hurry up and get the appointment, you're trying to hurry up and hang up or move on, then it's they don't feel comfortable. Right. So it's about trust. You're selling trust here. Because they don't know what they're getting themselves into. Right. They went online, they saw this property and they clicked on it and Someone buying their first home, that's a big step, right? You guys just bought your first home. How much, how much emotions and nervousness? This fucker called me like three times, right? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it's a, big, it's a big deal, right? There's a lot behind it, right? So just know that for us, like we're in the business, we become numb to it after a while, right? Because we've, we've talked to so many, like this is the hundredth lead you've talked to in the last month, right? It's another lead, right? And a lot of times, naturally, you treat them that way. But just know that you're talking to someone that is buying their first freaking home. They've been saving up for the last three years, and they finally got the down payment, or they finally got the promotion, or they finally make enough income. And that's a big chunk of money they're going to put down. And now they're going to have this big mortgage payment. And there's a lot of unknowns. And there's, you know, they're not sure if this is the right move, but they know they should buy. Like There's all these things going on in their head. So we got to understand that that responsibility relies on us to, to make them feel comfortable, make them feel good about it, you know, make it as stress-free as possible. Like you're a part of a huge, huge milestone for somebody. So when you make it like, this is all the mindset, right? Like when you make it bigger than just answering the Zillow call and like getting the flex lead, when it becomes bigger than that, it's like, no, I'm changing someone's freaking life, right? If I'm changing someone's life on, if I have the potential to change their life on this call, I'm going to treat that call a lot different. If it's just another flex lead, I'm going to get 10 more this month. And yeah, who cares if I answer it, I get it, if I get it, if I don't, like, you're already, you're already lost. But if you're changing lives every time you talk to somebody, it's a big deal, right? You're gonna treat it different. Who wants to change lives? That's what I want to do. Um, okay, I think the training's over. Fuck, that was enough. <laughs> that was enough. I mean, because if I say more, you're gonna forget about what I just said right now. So, uh, but there's other stuff we gotta talk about. But I want you to remember that changing lives, right? You are impacting someone's life.
you get some good feedback, Beto? Let's go. Let's change lives, bro. And whether you're new or you're experienced or you've done this a million times or this is your first fucking deal, you can change someone's life. And we are in our area, like really, who can afford a million dollar home or more? That's like drastic. Very few. Very few people. Yeah. That's life changing. Congratulate them. Exactly. Right. And if you're if you're not excited, how do you expect them to get excited, especially on the phone call? Right. So sometimes we're like, oh, yeah, I just got the appointment. And then when I meet them, then I'll then I'll do all this. Then I'll then I'll build rapport. Then I'll get excited when I meet them. No, it's from the moment you answer the phone. Right. From how you greet them, you know, hey, how's it going? Hey, thanks for calling. Hey, congrats on you know, finding us on Zillow. I'm glad we connected. You know, I see you want to see this property, you know, today at two o'clock. That's a nice home, right? Are you from Fremont? You see, now I'm like, I'm adding a lot more, right? Now I'm just not the guy that just answered the Zillow call that's, you're going to forget about. Now they're like, oh shit, like, who's this guy? I thought I was just getting a Zillow rep, you know, that's somewhere in another country or something, you know, a call center. They don't know. They don't know what they're getting. So it's your job to wow them when you answer that call and get them intrigued, right? I got to meet this person now. Yeah, mm -hmm. this guy's giving value. I want to I want to work with this person or I'm, I'm giving them a preview of what it's going to be like to work with me when you meet me. Um, just imagine like if you ended every single call with thanking them for connecting with you. This just popped in my head. Imagine if you added that every time you got a lead and you hung up with them, even after you booked the appointment, you did everything right before you hang up, you said, Hey, you know what? I just want to thank you for connecting with me. I know there's a lot of options out there, you know, and somehow you clicked on Zillow and you got connected with our team, but you know, when you meet with us, we're going to make sure we do the best job for you. We're going to make sure we, we make this as smooth as possible. Cause I know this is a big deal. Buying a home out here is, is, is really tough for a lot of people. I just want to thank you for connecting with us. I look forward to seeing you today at two. What would happen to all your calls? Because nowadays, right? Like, think about it. Most people are freaking rude nowadays, right? No one gives a shit about anybody nowadays. You go to the store, you driving, people cut you off. People don't open the door for you. People don't say thank you anymore. People don't say you're welcome. People don't look you in the eye, right? Just imagine if at the end of every freaking call, you said thank you and you genuinely thank them for the opportunity to be a part of this big milestone for them. How would the person feel on the other end? Well, thank you. Who are you, are you this is a prank, <laughs> right? They would be shocked. But would they feel good? Hell yeah. Would they meet with you just because of that? Yeah. More likely. Is it a guarantee? No. But if they talk to five agents and you're the one that did that and the other ones did it, they're going to meet with you. Style over substance. Yeah. It's not what you said, it's how you made them feel, right? People do not care until they know that you care. So you gotta care. Be a Jer, Jer, Jer Bear, Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I hope these guys can hear me. <laughs> uh, can someone type in the chat if you guys can hear me? Cause you guys are all frozen on my end. And I just spit some fire right now. Um, okay. Good. And the great thing is it's recorded. Um, free flowing. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's just my computer. Oh, okay. Good. I was like, damn, I hope they heard all that. That's really good stuff. Uh, okay. So let's go to um, what I have to share and we will wrap this up. And actually what I was going to share from the feedback from our, from our growth advisor is a lot of what we just talked about right now. Um, and if you see here, 
these are the notes from my meeting yesterday is how do we get more people to show up and meet us? How do we separate ourselves from the competition? Right? Because what's happening right now, guys, is as inventory goes lower, right? The concentration of buyers to those particular homes goes up, right? Because if there's only 500 homes available and let's say there's 10,000 buyers, well, they're all going looking at those ones, right? So they're all interacting with the agents who have those, right? It's not as, as spread out, right? So we have to separate ourselves from the competition. As companies like Zillow start to go recruit other teams to be Zillow um, flex agents, which they are, you know, there was only a handful initially. Now there's more. Um, how do we separate ourselves, right? As more agents get into the business and get their license, there's going to be a new wave of like really good agents, right? Maybe who come from other businesses or maybe who just get it that come in and, you know, are your competition now, which is the good thing, right? Because it, it only means that the good ones are going to get better and the shitty ones are going to get pushed out, right? So you just got to choose a side. Shitty side or you're going to be the, better, the best ones, right? You're going to be on this side. The best. Um, so how do we separate ourselves from the competition? We have to assume that every buyer and seller you talk to is talking to another agent. Even if they signed the loyalty agreement with you, even if they're in contract with you, you need to assume that there's someone else hitting them up because there are. And you know, there's sneaky agents out there who will yeah, cancel that listing. I'll do it for cheaper, right? They do that all the time. There's agents who don't follow the rules, who don't follow, you know, who are not ethical, right? Even though we are, we do the right thing. There's bad people out there, right? Yeah, it's people saying, you know, that's my mom's name. And it's not. <laughs> but we have to assume that all buyers are talking to other agents, all sellers are talking to agents, all of our loan clients are talking to other lenders and they're shopping around, right? Because if you just always keep that in the back of your mind, then you are always going to be at the top of your game. The moment you think, ah, oh, no, I got this one in the bag, it's a done deal, and you freaking take your foot off the gas, someone, someone like me will swoop them up, right? Or someone like Bethel, now that he has some, now that I see his wheels turning now, he's like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, right? Bethel's going to swoop them up from me, right? Because you took your foot off the gas and you got lazy and you didn't bring 100%, you know, your A game to that client. So what are some things that we can do? And this is, these are what some of the best teams are doing right now. And this is kind of what we went over yesterday. Number one, uh, Daniel Beer, their team who does over 600 million, which I'm now going to be coached by, by their team leader um, this year. They do video messages on every single appointment. It's part of their process. You book an appointment, you immediately send the video message. Why? Because what we're doing is we're fighting for inches right now, right? Like we're now, we're going deeper with every single thing that we do. How do we convert more leads from the ones we already have right now, right? Got to do more on the ones that we have. Video message on every single appointment you book. Going forward, starting today, you book an appointment. As soon as you hang up, you send the video message. Great thing is you can record the video message ahead of time and just have a generic one. It doesn't have to say their name. It could be like, you know, hey, it's Bethel. You know, it was so great talking to you. I really look forward to meeting with you soon and helping you with your real estate goals. Just want to put a face to the name. I'll be shooting you a text, you know, confirming all of the information we talked about. You know, I look forward to meeting you. You can send that same message, save it on your phone and send that to every single person you talk to, right? So record one good one, right? Where you look good, the lighting's good, the sound's good. There's not a bunch of people freaking talking in the background. Save that shit in your phone. Send that, send that to every single person. It's a template. Go a step further, create that, upload it to YouTube, create a template in FirePoint where you have that video already there right? Or you can save it as a video in PowerPoint probably. And then you could just apply the template and it automatically texts in that video for you. There's different ways you can do it. I think doing it from your cell phone is probably more effective because it's more personal and you're probably going to text them your contact info anyways. So like what I do, um, what I do, like when I get a Redfin lead, 
I already have, because Redfin, the way you get Redfin leads is you have to accept the lead and then it'll ask you if you want to call, email, or text. I select text on every single one. And in my phone, in my notes, I already have a template already saved. All I do is copy it and paste it, right? And basically it says, hey, you know, thanks for, you know, connecting with me on Redfin. A member from my team will be in touch to schedule the, your tour. And then that lead routes to Firepoint. It goes to one of you guys. You guys are going to call them anyways. Right. So it's the same thing. You can just go in your notes and you can say video message template, record the video, post, paste the video there. Right. Record your um, your contact info. Right. Draw all your contact info right there. And then all you got to do on every single one is you can just click on the note and then you can hit share, type in that person's phone number and it'll send that to them. Or you can just copy it and paste it so that you're not having to recreate this thing every single time. So video message, a generic video message, casual. I want to put a face to the name. It was great connecting with you. I'll be in touch, you know, for next steps. Look forward to meeting with you. You do that on every single appointment you book, your conversion will go up. More people will meet with you, which means more opportunities to close the deal. You'll get more deals in contract. This is, it's gonna happen, bottom line. That's what some of the best teams are doing out there. Starbucks technique. Who remembers the Starbucks technique? Going forward now, you buy Starbucks for every single one of your appointments. Or at least you offer to buy Starbucks for them, right? probably not going to buy it for them on every single one but you offer and that gets them to confirm that they're meeting with you it also separates you from the competition and it's a tax write-off right so you don't ask them you tell them you're getting them starbucks what would you like hey i'm hey i look forward to meeting with you in an hour i'm going to stop at starbucks beforehand what would you like not like, do you want me to stop at Starbucks for you? See the difference? What would you like? And if they like something, oh, that's so nice of you. you know, just give me a freaking latte. Oh, you know what? Thank you so much. I'm okay, right? I'll see you in an hour. Oh, you know what? You know what? Don't get me Starbucks. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to meet with you, right? So either way, either response is a good response, right? Give me a thumbs up if you're buying Starbucks for every client now. He showed with the whole family. <laughs> $20 Starbucks. Like, yeah, we're in the game. Oh, but <laughs> who else is buying them Starbucks? Who else is buying them Starbucks, right? And if, hey, and if you go to Manny, he, he might hook it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, they go to Starbucks. And there's Manny's right here. <laughs> okay. Um, here's the next thing. Offer additional information to make you stand out, right? When you show up to your appointment, what if you already show up with, the, with comps? What if you already show up with other listings? Print it out. What if you already show up with the crime report or the school report for that neighborhood or a report that has the local amenities, right? And you show up and you're like, hey, I'm not sure if you know this about this area. I wanted to make sure you had as much information as possible. I actually ran some comps just so you can get an idea of what this home would sell for, right? I also got the crime reports. I also got the school reports and also some of the local amenities. There's a lot of good stuff around here that you may or may not know about, right? Did you know there's a, they're opening up a new school down the street or they're opening up a gym or whatever? What did you just do now to that, with, for that client? How did you present? You're standing out, right? Um, at the appointment, right? Remember, sometimes these people are getting off work. Let me go back, offer additional information, right? Because I want to make sure you guys understand this. It's going to take you a couple extra minutes, right? There's probably a website you can download it real quick. You could even just print out the Zillow's estimate. Like, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Do it as easy as possible. What matters is that you show up different, right? Let's say you just printed out the Zestimate for each one. This is the ballpark, right? It doesn't have to be exact. But you're going to show them three properties. You went on Zillow. You printed out three the three front pages where it says this estimate and it has the info on the property. 
plus your work plus we work with Zillow, right? Zillow Flex. And it has school reports. Has the school reports on there? The rankings of the school. What if you just printed out the Zillow page? Or the Redfin page or whatever, right? And now you have stuff to talk about. Now you have stuff to share with them. Now you are showing your value to them as an agent. Now you are showing what it's going to be like for them to work with you and your team. Showing up empty handed, just opening the door for them. You are a door opener. Showing up with all this info, all this value, all this stuff. You are now an advisor. Who gets paid more? A door opener or an advisor? Advisor. Anybody got a financial advisor? They make money, right? <laughs> so become an advisor. You are an advisor to your clients. You're a consultant, right? When you talk to people, let them know you want to be their advisor, right? Even say those words because it holds more weight, right? Don't be someone's realtor. Realtor. <laughs> <laughs> right? When you're someone's advisor, oh shit. Yeah. 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 When you use advisor. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, their eyes are just like, changes like their whole perception of who you are. it's a different level right when you're when you're telling someone hey look at my job is to be your real estate advisor for life where you can come to me and i'm going to offer you the best advice so that you save time money and stress that is what you want right okay and then you start using your sales skills to close them right but when you speak in those terms you are now elevating yourself and separating yourself from the competition because no one else is saying that shit. Most agents are not saying that. Most agents are just showing up, opening the door, and they're freaking late and, you know, scrambling to get the freaking super box open, right? And I know some of you guys are doing that too, so don't do that no more. This is your time to make the adjustments, right? Going forward, 2022 is going to be a different year, right? So you need to be the advisor. Um, let's see. At the appointment, next point. Remember, people are usually getting off work to come meet you. People are hungry, they're tired, they just work all day. What if you had like a granola bar, a little water bottle, a PR, we could get some branded PRG water bottles or we slap a sticker, or even if you just had a case of waters in your car, right? Or you had some gum or a mint or whatever, or a little care package. Hey, this is something I do for all my clients. I know you're probably rushing over here from work. Traffic's probably crazy. You probably haven't ate dinner yet. You know, you know, I got you know a little care package. Boom, it's already wrapped. A little water, a little granola bar. Does that separate you from the competition? Right. Remember, like, and then you do all of these. You stack them all, right? And then that person's like blown away, right? And you look the part and you dress the part and you're on time and you're early and you smell nice and your hair is combed and, you know, all that stuff, right? And you speak with confidence and you, you know, shake their hand, you know, maybe not during COVID, but you look them in the eyes, right? Like you show, like you show the confidence, like you're working with, you're working with a different level, right? We're not the dollar store, we're Nordstrom's, right? A different level or whatever's higher than Nordstrom's. I don't know, Bloomingdale's or um next one. You have some sort of packet or something that you leave with your buyers, right? So in a folder, um, maybe has a bio about you, has your photo, quick little bio, production, some of your awards and accolades, right? Where you're from, your business card, info about the company. Maybe on the back, it says why they want to work with us, the competitive advantage they're going to get by working with us to buy or sell. Just a little something that you're going to leave with them that's going to get them like, oh, shit, this guy's different. This girl's different, right? And that's something that we can have um, DJ put together for us and create one for each person on the team. Um, and you just add that into your presentation, right? You add that into when you meet them. It's, it's something they get to look at. And you can open it and show them, like, hey, guys, I just want to let you know I brought this. This is a little bit of information about me, about my company, for you to get to know me a little bit better. 
um, all my contact info, here's a link, all my reviews, right? Some of my most recent sales that I've done. Uh, Keeks, I don't know if- um, your... yeah. uh, So I've been using the, the folders that we use for the listing presentations. Uh, I used it like once or twice already. Um, and I put the comps in there and I put the client uh, MLS page in there and then it has a spot for your card and I've, I've been putting that in there as well and I've been doing it with the last two or three clients and they love it like it looks very professional and now that um, you're saying that we can add a bio to this or giving us this idea it's going to be even better it's going to look even more professional but uh, I know those folders are intended just for the, the listing presentation so I mean if we can uh, you know reorder some that, that may be cheaper I don't know how much those cost you guys but um, you know that folder is money. Yep. No, we'll get some more. Um, we'll definitely get some more. I mean, it's an investment, right? I mean, it, they probably cost a couple bucks each or whatever, but to spend a couple bucks more to convert 10% more of the leads, right? Which is going to equal millions of dollars in revenue, you know, that's going to get spread out. Um, yeah. It's worth it all day, you know? So Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll do that. Um, we can have some ready. We can have some print. You have some already printed out, right? Like nice paper and everything. So it looks professional and you keep them with you. Maybe you keep that in the back of your car, right? You already have them set up so that all you do is just, just grab it, right? You're not having to scramble to put it together, right? This is where you're now like thinking of like, how am I going to represent my business, represent the company and all that stuff to these clients? So yeah, definitely. Um, so that's something we'll, we'll have DJ work on. We'll come, we'll come up with some sort of template and we'll create a bio for each person on the team. We'll just need your help. Just giving us some of the information. It doesn't have to be nothing elaborate. It could be a standard template and a, the back can already have a lot of like our sales and everything. It doesn't even have to be your sales. And just the front will just be your information, your personal information, right? It, remember, to the client, they don't know, right? Oh, did you really sell this? We talked about, did you really sell this million dollar house, right? They're not going to ask that. They're, what they're going to see is, right? <laughs> they're going to see the overall package, right? Um, okay, and then the last thing, a little note was um, a coloring book or something for the kids, right? I remember I got this idea from you, actually, right? You Didn't you do that before? Um, Coloring book and my my sister actually came up with the idea. She bought me a chair package. Yeah. So I have that in my trunk. So Luis has coloring book and stuff for the kids. Keeps them in his car. Um, so when there's kids out there, he just busts them out, right? Even if it's like a little toy, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. But the fact that you went out of your way, you know, to give the kids something, right? A little fidget, like whatever those, my kids play with those little popper fidget thingies, right? Like a little fidget with PRG on it. Bam, I just came up with it right now. I already know my daughter would take that to school and be like, look what I got. Oh yeah, right? A little, well, I don't know what they're called, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Dude, right? And they're, they're going to want to, dad, where's the guy with the fidgets, right? And every time you come through, hey, here, I got another fidget for you. Bro, light, but light bulb's going off right now. Fidgets. Uh, PRG fidgets, dude. Because it's, it's, they're made in China or something, right? They're probably not that expensive. We throw our logo on them or they're branded to us. But the impact that it makes, because it's so popular right now with kids, and then what the parent's going to see is like, this agent's different. I've met three or four other agents and Dude, like this agent blows everybody out of the water. When you acknowledge right? their kids or their kids get attention, they totally appreciate that. Yep. I yeah, they do, you know, because I, when you I, can uh that's the soft spot. It's the soft spot. I remember you back you in Jay? middle school, um, my mom. Uh, she's also a real estate agent and a lender, but um, she would have these like pens that also have flashlights at the end. And like, I, I would like show that to my um, friends at school and they're like, what the hell? 
why is this pen have a flashlight? It's so cool. So it really does work. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> there you go, right? Um, so yeah, you bring something that gets the kids' attention, or you or you give acknowledge the kids, right? You acknowledge the parents. You say hi to the kids. You know, there's probably I guarantee you some ages just don't even look at the kids, right? They're just it's just business, right? Like let's close the deal, right? That doesn't that doesn't go a long way, right? Because if you're a parent and you have kids, and you know how hard it is to raise kids. Yo, hey, Enrique, just kind of like just kind of touch on that. Like, uh, this last client that we got in contract, uh, it, it was really cool because like as the, the daughter was like seven, right? So as we're looking at the house, I'm like, so Myra, what's important to you about your your guys' future home? And like after like our third or fourth showing, like our third or fourth time getting together, the dad was like, hey, you call Thomas Uncle Uncle Thomas, right? And like like I was like, man, I'm in, dude. Like I'm in, and then. You know, we got them in contract, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> there you go, right? Now you're Uncle Thomas, dude. Like, that means you did your job, bro, like, of, of building that relationship with, with the family, with the kids, with everybody, right? You know, that's 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 awesome, man. And, and if someone is telling you their kids to call you uncle, that speaks a lot about what you did with that family. Trust, Trust right? Anytime they, anytime they think real estate, they're thinking Uncle Thomas now, not Thomas Mesa, the realtor, right? So that's awesome, bro. Okay, any questions on this? Raise your hand, like if, if you got some ideas, like if your wheels are turning right now, right? On what you can do to separate yourself, right? Not, you know, and even like, like Delirious here, right? Even on the lending side, there are plenty of things you can do. You can take a lot of these concepts and, and tweak them to make them apply to the lending side, right? Like adding a bio to your presentation where you go over your track record, right? With your headshot and everything. And before you start your presentation, you talk about who you are, what you do, how long you've been in the business, how many transactions you close, you know, stuff like that. Now that separates you. Because remember, like even on like on lending side, a lot of clients are shopping around for rate because rate is the only thing the agents are offering. If your value proposition is just the interest rate, like from a lending standpoint, then that's all they have to look at. But if you have all these other things that you bring to the table, like who you are, what you do, how you conduct yourself, the relationship you're building, you're, an advi you're a mortgage advisor, all of these things, then the rate... It does play a role, but it plays less of a role when you're really close with someone else, right? You know what? Delary's an eighth higher, but man, like the way she runs her business and the confidence I get and the trust I have with her and like the professionalism and all that stuff and, you know, how she, you know, treats me and she follows up with me and she invites me to her events and all these things. I'd rather go with her. It's worth me paying a little bit more to get this amount of service. And let me tell you one thing, anybody who's buying a million dollar home or more, you gotta make some level of income, right? That means you make money. And people who make money pay for service. The ones who are like the, the, on the cheaper end, on the lower end, those are a lot of times when they're nickel and diming you because they're, you know, maybe they don't have money to, to disposable income, right? Or maybe they're just in a different mindset, you know, or a lower income bracket or whatever it might be. But people who can afford things, they pay for service. They pay for things. They pay more to get something better. So how do you make more money in this business? You provide better service. You provide more value. You separate yourself from the competition. The amount of money that you make in this business is going to directly correlate to the amount of value that you bring to the table. You don't bring any value, you're not going to get paid that much. You bring the most value, you charge the most. You make the most. And you also serve the client at a way higher level. Um, I think that's it, guys. I'm not going to go into... The other stuff, um, as far as Zillow Flex, 
we got to push guys. We got to push our numbers up. Um, you know, right now it's tricky time, right? Almost all teams. The, the thing with Zillow Flex is we're being graded based off how the market is performing. And during the holidays, you know, because of inventory and all that stuff, like if we're not converting as much, other teams are not converting as much either, right? It's, it's, it's kind of averages out, which is the good thing. But at the same time, we don't want to take our foot off the gas because it's the holidays. We don't want to like not go above and beyond because it's the holidays. And we don't want to um, sell ourselves short or lower our expectations of our goals. So um, we're like teeter tottering, like right there. We're a little bit behind from where we were at the last couple of months um, just because it's, you know, we're getting into the holidays. Right. So there's a, there's a little bit of distractions, but we got to continue to push people. The ones that are serious right now, the people who are still going out and looking at homes with you during the holidays, those are the people you need to give all your attention to. Right now, what we're doing for this for this month of December is we're filtering people out, right? We're putting them in two buckets, people who are ready to go now or people who are ready to go after the new year. That should be your job. Continue to call, continue to take the calls, continue to book the appointments, continue to ask the right questions, continue to gauge who is motivated and ready to go right now. Give all your attention to those. And the ones that are not, it's going to be really hard for you to convince someone, right? I mean, you can in certain situations, right? But it's, it's really hard to convince someone who's made up their mind that they just don't want to deal with buying a home or selling a home during the holidays. And you have to respect that at certain points, right? Which means you got to talk to more people to find the people who are wanting to transact right now. So if you talk to, you know, if you talk to two different clients and one of them is wants to go look at homes this weekend and the other one's like, ah, call me after the holidays. Great. Make sure you put them on a nurture. Make sure you put them on a campaign. Make sure it's in your calendar. Let them know, hey, is it okay if I call you on this day to follow up and we'll get the ball rolling then? And then that guy who is ready to go right now, like that's the one you're all over. You're sending properties to, you're doing your research, you're door knocking neighborhoods, you're looking for expireds because right now we don't have that much inventory. I think as of yesterday, there's only about 700 homes, including single family townhouse condo in Santa Clara County, 700. And there's probably uh, 15,000 agents, at least. Maybe out of those 15,000, maybe 10,000 of them are active, right? So 10,000 agents in our county going after 700 homes. So what's happening right now is deals are being put together off market, expired. If someone had their home on the market a couple months ago and they took it off, or maybe they took it off right before the holidays, and you called them, and said, hey, I have a buyer who's ready to go. Do you still want to sell your home? There's going to be some deals there. Maybe you might have to get creative and maybe like we'll close escrow after the new year or something like that, right? Like there's different ways you can structure the deal, maybe because they just don't want to move during Christmas. But that's, that's just a matter of negotiating the terms, right? But the point I'm trying to get at is that there's people out there that still want to buy and sell right now. And there's a lot of people who are going to push it off to the new year. So your job is just to figure out which bucket they go in and give attention to the ones who are ready to go right now. Right. And how do you figure that out? You just ask questions. So rather than to go into like our, our, you know, our metrics, our exact numbers and all that stuff, I don't, we're doing a lot of the right things right now. It's like now for us, it's tweaking it's the little fine tuning that's going to make your conversion higher. That's going to make you more efficient, right? It's all these things that I went over. How do you separate yourself from the other agent? How do you separate yourself on the initial phone call? How do you separate yourself when you meet with them in person? That's what I want you to take from this entire training today is how do I separate myself from the other agent? Because if you focus on that, then everything else, everything else come. Cool. We good. Last questions, comments, concerns. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you for attending the training. Let me know if you need anything. Um, this recording will be up on our YouTube channel and on our training page ASAP. See you later.